In our next lesson from Chapter 19 on the regulation of mammalian fuel metabolism, let's look at the effects of the hormones glucagon and epinephrine. Glucagon is a small peptide hormone, only 29 residues, even smaller than insulin. It also is synthesized and released by the pancreas in the islets of Langerhans, only they're released from alpha cells. Remember, insulin is released from beta cells. Here's our figure on the lower right. Here's the pancreas. As we zoom in on those islets of Langerhans, the rose-colored cells are intended to represent the beta cells that produce insulin, and the alpha cells are the pale-colored cells that release glucagon. Glucagon is in many respects the opposite of insulin. Remember, insulin signifies high blood glucose. Glucagon is produced in response to a drop in blood sugar levels. So it stimulates production of glucose by the liver. It stimulates glycogenolysis, release of stored glucose from glycogen, and gluconeogenesis, synthesizing glucose from scratch. In addition to stimulating the production of glucose by the liver, Glucagon also stimulates lipolysis in adipose tissues, thereby mobilizing the stored triacylglycerols by releasing the fatty acids. We have a space-filling model of glucagon at the bottom of the slide. Muscle cells respond to a different hormone. Epinephrine stimulates glycogenolysis in muscle cells. Remember, that's the release of glucose from stored glycogen. Recall that muscle cells do not have the capacity to carry out gluconeogenesis as the liver does. So let's review the response of cells to the glucagon epinephrine signaling pathway. Binding of these hormones to their receptors stimulates a G-protein signaling pathway that eventuates in the production of the second messenger cyclic AMP. Binding of cyclic AMP to protein kinase A thereby activates it, and protein kinase A has a dual effect on glucose metabolism. First, it inhibits glycogen synthesis by inactivating the enzyme glycogen synthase. Protein kinase A also activates phosphorylase kinase in order to stimulate glucose and fatty acid release. It does so by activating, first of all, glycogen phosphorylase, thereby stimulating the release of glucose from stored glycogen in the liver as well as the muscle. At the same time, phosphorylase kinase activates a hormone-sensitive lipase to release fatty acids from adipose tissues. Remember, everything is shifting in favor of fuel release and use rather than storage. So what are the effects of these rather complex signaling cascades? Why are there so many steps in these pathways? Let's look at the effects of the epinephrine cascade as an example. Remember, this stimulates cyclic AMP production, and the cascade greatly amplifies the effects of these hormones, so that a small amount of hormone can have a large effect. In the figure to the right, let's take an example of one epinephrine molecule binding to its receptor and stimulating a G protein. Let's assume that G protein is responsible for the downstream effect of producing 20 molecules of cyclic AMP. Through those cyclic AMP molecules, we'll stimulate half that number of protein kinase A, so that now we have 10 molecules of active protein kinase A. Let's assume that each of those molecules can activate 10 molecules of phosphorylase kinase. So then we have 100 molecules of active phosphorylase kinase. Each of those molecules of phosphorylase kinase, let's assume, can activate 10 molecules of glycogen phosphorylase. Now we have 1,000 molecules of active phospho glycogen phosphorylase. And let's assume that each of those enzymes can stimulate the release of 10 molecules of glucose 1-phosphate to give us 10 molecules of glucose. So the downstream effect of one molecule of epinephrine binding to its receptor is that we've released 10,000 molecules of glucose into the bloodstream. Of course, we're elevating the blood glucose concentration quickly, so we need to also be able 
to turn off this pathway quickly. Remember, the G proteins have inherent GTPase activity. The active form is GTP bound, but it will only remain active for a limited period of time. Once the GTPase activity is stimulated, it will hydrolyze GTP to GDP and convert it to the inactive form, thereby turning off the pathway. In our next video lesson, we want to look at some other hormonal regulators and see their influence on metabolism.